you are welcome to this brief introduction to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, the last in our series of Bible studies titled Facing the End Times. Most of the text that we shall reference can be downloaded as documents by the links below. Let's get into it. This passage contains the famous text that reads, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. The text was written in the common Koine Greek, prevalent in the Greco-Roman Empire in the first century of our era. Although the text has been very well preserved, there are some minor scribble errors to be found in some of the, for example, in verse 12, two manuscripts read, your struggle, instead of our struggle, since the two words sound alike, humin and hemin. Manuscript P46 of around the year 200 has a gross mistake reading tactics in place of rulers against the authorities. The same manuscripts omits the phrase, the heavenly places. And manuscript Vaticanus from the 5th century omits the phrase of the gospel in verse 19. Several of the Greek words behind our translation require some attention. For example, the command to be strong comes as a present tense, passive voice, imperative verb. In the active voice, it means to cause one to be able to function or do something, hence strengthen, and in the passive voice, to become able to function or do something, to become strong. That is, our ability comes from without ourselves. Verse 11 speaks about the schemes of the devil. The Greek word is the origin of our English and French terms method, but in Christian literature, it appears only in the book of Ephesians, and only in an unfavorable sense, meaning scheming or craftiness. The verbal form of this noun means to defraud, to deceive, or to pervert. In verse 12, we read about rulers. A ruler is an authority figure who initiates activity or process, that is, a ruler with some authority. Used of angelic or transcendent powers, since they were thought of as having a political organization. This term appears in several of Paul's epistles in the same sense. An authority is a bearer of ruling authority used of political authorities, officials, government workers, but also of transcendent, that is, spiritual rulers and functionaries, powers in the spirit world. Again, used in several of Paul's epistles and in Peter's. Cosmic powers, a compound word meaning world ruler, and is used in secular Greek of world ruling gods, which we understand to be evil spirits. Spiritual forces is a single word, a substantive adjective, which pertains to evil spirits, the spirit forces of evil and such. And then the term evil itself, poneria, an abstract noun, in Christian literature is used only in the ethical sense, that is, the state or condition of a lack of moral or social values, including wickedness, baseness, maliciousness, and sinfulness. More about this later. The heavenly places, or heavenlies, also a substantive adjective, pertains to being associated with a locale for transcendent things, that is, spiritual beings, 
translated heavenly or in heaven. But the masculine plural, which we have here, was often in secular Greek a designation of the gods, hostile spirits, and various heavenly beings. In verse 13, we have the adjective form of evil, which pertains to being morally or socially worthless, wicked, evil, bad, base, worthless, vicious, degenerate. A close connection with sin is its chief characteristic. This is destructive evil. The term day can mean any extended period of time, much as the Hebrew word yom, in its singular form, as we have here, it may be translated when the times are evil, as the lexicon observes, unless the reference is to the final judgment, which it very well may be here, that evil day towards the end of the present age. In verse 16, we have the evil one, a substantive adjective being the same word, poniros, used above. This is the evil one, the devil who is not defined as a sinner, but as one who is morally destructive. The grammar of this passage is rather straightforward, leveraging some common grammatical features of the Greek language. Greek imperatives, that is, commands, orders, or advice, can be given in one of two tenses. The present tense, which implies ongoing or repetitive action, as in, keep doing so, or in the aorist tense, which implies nothing about duration, as in, do so. Present tense commands can be given as a finite verb, as in, always do so. Present tense commands can also be given as a participle, as in, always doing so. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, there are three present tense commands. In verse 10, be strong, that is, keep being enabled by the Lord's might. And in verse 18, two participles, praying, that is, keep praying in your spirit, and stay alert. All of the other imperatives and participles in verses 10 through 20 are in the aorist tense, explaining how to keep strong, how to keep praying, and how to stay awake. The history lying behind this passage refers to several other scriptures. The command to stand, as in, stand against the schemes of the devil, able to withstand in the evil day, stand therefore, recalls the words of Jesus, Stay alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to stand before the Son of Man at his coming. In verses 8, 11, and 12, we have reference to darkness, the present evil system in which we live. This is the same term that the author used in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 when he wrote, you are not in darkness, brothers, and we are not of the night or of the darkness. In verse 14, the term truth was used repeatedly by our author in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, speaking of unbelievers who found no place in their hearts for the truth, so as to be saved, who have not believed the truth. For sanctification comes by the Spirit and faith in the truth. In verse 17, reference to a helmet of salvation is an allusion to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17, where we read that the Lord, his desire is to deliver or save, is like a helmet on his head. In verse 17, the word of God called the Sword of the Spirit, has a parallel in Second Timothy, where our author wrote, All Scripture is breathed out, that is, spirited out, by God and is profitable. 
verse 18 says we are to remain alert by praying. Both the language and the grammar of the passage recall Jesus' words from Luke chapter 21, Stay alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to stand before the Son of Man. Also in verse 18, we have reference to praying at all times, employing the Greek term kairos, often translated season, a long period of time. This was used in Second Thessalonians, where we read, You know what holds back the Antichrist so that he will be revealed in his own season. And in First Thessalonians, concerning the times and seasons, you have no need to have anything written to you. In Second Timothy, we read that in the last days, difficult times will come, or difficult seasons. And then we read in Revelation chapter 12, The devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time or his season is short. Same term is used of the woman, a metaphor for Israel, who is to be nourished for a time and times and a half time, meaning three and a half years. In verse 19, we read of the gospel of peace. When we studied Matthew chapter 24, we encountered the promise of Jesus that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And in Second Thessalonians, To this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The structure or argument of the passage is rather straightforward building on the affirmation earlier in the book that God made us alive together with Christ and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, 610 introduces a conclusion with an imperative in the present tense, always be strong in the Lord. Explaining how to do so, he says to put on the whole armor of God, and then gives us a reason for doing so, because we wrestle against cosmic powers, an inference drawn from this, for this reason, take up the whole armor of God, and an inference, therefore, stand. The final imperative reading, always praying. If you teach or preach through this passage, you may wish to underscore historic Christian doctrines found in these verses. In verse 10, we Christians find strength from the Lord Jesus to resist evil. In the following verses, there is reference to the devil and to evil spirits that rule over the world until Christ returns. In the final verses, it is the Holy Spirit working through the Word of God, through Christians' prayers, and through the preaching of the Gospel. Most adults learn best by reading together, discussing what they have found, and drawing from it practical applications. Thus, after having someone read aloud verses 10 and 11, you might ask, what does it mean to be strong in this context? You may download this text as a document with recommended replies to these queries. And then, how do we gain that strength? After reading verse 12, you could discuss what kinds of flesh and blood tyrants oppose God and humans in your experience? And who are these cosmic powers? After verse 13, some will want to know, since the days are evil, what is the evil day? After verses 14 through 15, where we are told to fasten on the belt of truth and, and shoes for our feet, you could ask learners to discuss 
How do Christians do so? Likewise, after verses 16 and 17, taking up the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation, again, how do Christians do so? After verse 18, some will want to know, what does it mean to pray in spirit in every season? And then, how can Christians pray on behalf of all the saints, since there are so many of them? After verses 19 through 20, consider discussing how important is group prayer to make the gospel spread through our city? And what should we ask God to do? And then practically, what steps could our churches take to make this kind of prayer happen? So, our assignment for this week is to read through Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, once a day this week, in different translations. You can find several at netbible.org. As you do so, observe instructions on how Christians may remain strong and stand firm in the coming evil day. Jot down other notes and queries that you want to discuss in your Bible study groups. In the books that we studied in this short series on facing the end times, we have learned that Christians who enter the end times will be able to stand. They will be able to endure. They will be able to keep faith. And they will be able to stand to see Jesus appear in the clouds and then come, raise them from death unto life. May God bless you richly as you study, learn, and teach this text to others.